Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Bandai Tamashi Nations SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z figure unboxing and review. Today, finally we're taking a look at none other than Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Although this is an SDCC exclusive, more on that a little bit later. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review, Dragon Ball Z or otherwise, goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it's nice and chalky and it's super vibrant. We've got an image of Goku off to the side, yes that's the actual figure in orange on a black background. Then a fully open window showcasing Goku inside, a bunch of accessories and the brand new aura. It's been a while since we received a new aura, I'm pretty sure we've only had the one version since the very beginning and that one was good but I'm pretty sure this one is going to be so much better. On the side of the box Super Saiyan 2 Son Goku exclusive edition then another massive image of Goku done in bright orange. Around the back some product shots of Goku in action poses, super modeling, super action. Then up top once again Super Saiyan 2 Son Goku exclusive edition. Now let's talk about that for just a second, I promise it won't take long. Now a lot of people including me have been wanting Super Saiyan 2 Goku forever. We've said as much, we've told Tamashi so they said no worries, we got you friend. We're going to give you Super Saiyan 2 Goku, but we're going to put it behind the most frustrating pay and availability wall ever. Event exclusive, you have to go in person to San Diego, you can get that done right, go ahead grab him, no problem. Actually Bandai, it is a big problem because you have fans in Japan, in Australia, in the UK, in many other countries and they can't access SDCC. So we have to resort to paying scalpers which is exactly what I did. So yeah, I absolutely loathe region exclusives and the gall, the fact that they did this for Super Saiyan 2 Goku, they are some cheeky devils. I can get around timed exclusives or limited edition figures but making them exclusive to only one country? It's just not ideal. First in hand impressions? He looks pretty darn good though. What we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the brand new Aura Effect first and honestly this was one of the main reasons I was super excited for this figure. I know I was excited for Goku himself but this Aura Effect with the lightning I've been waiting for lightning for my Super Saiyan 2 and beyond transformations forever. And I guess up until now they couldn't quite figure out how to get that done and make it look good. But plugging it into the aura, straight up genius and yes you will see what Goku looks like standing in front of the aura a little bit later. Now it is cast out of this translucent rubbery plastic and compared to the previous aura there is so much more detail. There are a bunch of spikies on the outside and the paint applications really good. There's this pearlescent white at multiple levels plus this metallic yellow but it's not super opaque, you can still tell that light passes through, it looks like it's glowing. Now for the lightning pieces they are plugged in with ball joints but this was super tricky to do, you have to apply a lot of pressure to push these in and they're really prickly so when you're doing that you're bound to dig them into your fingers so take your time and fingers crossed you'll suffer less damage to your fingers than I did. They're cast in this translucent blue plastic and you can move them around so when you pop your figure in they are a little bit poseable. Which is a good thing because they are in these really funky positions. Plus the bottom ones they do curve in quite tight so when you pop Goku or someone else in, maybe spoiler for a little bit later on, we'll have to wait and see, it does keep him pretty tight towards the back of the aura. And the best way I've found to do it is to slide him in from the bottom because otherwise there is a lot of collision. Like I said when installing them and also when installing your figure, take your time, you'll be perfectly fine. Or you won't, who knows, you'll have to let me know when you try yours because like I said it can be a little bit fiddly. Now we do get four face plates in total, one is already on the figure that's why we only have three here and we will be taking a much closer look at these on the actual figure. We do have a wide range of expressions from smirking to straight up screaming and the prints 
They're some of the best band I've ever done. They are so freaking clean. And lastly, a full array of hands, but we've seen these all before. There's nothing new. We won't spend too long here. We've got key blasting hands. We've got martial arts pose hands, instant transmission hands, and some hands potentially for a Kamehameha. What we are going to do now, though, is get Super Saiyan 2 Goku himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. It's Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Moving on. What's that? You need a little bit more information? Okay, let's do it. The hairpiece is new and painted in a soft metallic yellow slash gold. In isolation, it looks awesome, but compared next to the other transformations, which we will do, it might be a touch polarizing, depending on your personal preference. The proportions are good, because we've seen this body before. It's the same tried and true 2.0 Goku body. But this time, his chest piece is all new, because his shirt has been torn away, which is accurate to Super Saiyan 2. Also, the orange is a little bit lighter. But everything else, standard Goku fare, we've pretty much seen it all before. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Goku's hair slash head sculpt, and his more neutral faceplate first. We will switch out the faceplate for some of the other options in just a second. I like the shape of the hair, it's suitably spiky and full and voluminous. There are some lines sculpted in for some added detail, and the fringe is accurate to Super Saiyan 2. As compared to Super Saiyan 4 Power Goku, no, they haven't just reused the hair, it is brand new for this figure. You also have a halo around the back, that is removable. So if you decide, no, my Super Saiyan 2 Goku isn't dead, he's alive and well, you can get that done. Now his faceplate, at least on my copy, falls off constantly, super annoying. Something else that's super annoying, bringing back in 4 Power Goku, why is the hair metallic gold? Now I understand, it's an exclusive, so maybe that's why they gave it this special colorway, but seeing as though Super Saiyan 1 and Super Saiyan 3 and 4 Power Goku, they all have yellow hair, why is this one metallic? It's super weird and it doesn't blend well. When we do comparisons and we have the full lineup out here, you'll see exactly what I mean. The other complaint is... His neck is really long. I don't know if mine was misassembled at the factory, but as you can see, his neck just goes on forever. As for some of the other faceplate options, though, oh, and I have popped the halo back on, because, you know, it's accurate to Super Saiyan 2. Plus, because that stem is translucent plastic and it's hidden behind the central hair spike, it actually looks like that halo is floating. There is also some yellow paint up on top, it's not just clear plastic, but the light does still pass through. Now this faceplate with the grin, hands down, my favourite of the bunch. It is so Super Saiyan 2 Goku. He's confident and he knows that he's gonna kick your butt. Or he knows that he's got more in the tank for Super Saiyan 3, but you know, keep that one a secret. This one might be worried or shocked Goku, or maybe he's dodging a key blast or an attack, but he's clearly seen something that he's not a fan of. Something that I'm not a fan of is that gap right there. Now, the other faceplates didn't have it. Luckily, this one sits in a little bit more securely than the other ones, but that gap between the fringe and the hair, it literally makes it look like he's wearing a wig. I cannot get over that long neck, I have no idea what's going on here. I mean, I can try and pose it away by angling the neck forward and the head up, but the hair is so heavy, it pulls the entire thing back, because that neck is jointed as well. Also, no, I haven't missed the schmutz on the side of the hair, I can see it, but it's not really a deal breaker for me. The neck is the larger of the two issues. See what I did there? Because it's a larger neck. Anyway, this faceplate is so much angrier. Maybe he's mid-battle, he's mid-transformation, he's powering up, Kamehameha. So many different options with this particular faceplate. I love the way it's painted, and I really dig the expression. But let me know down below which of the faceplate options is your favourite. Pretty keen to find out. As is typical for Bandai, Unfortunately, even on event exclusives, there's no shading on the back, it's all just bare orange plastic. But around the front, there is shading. Now, it's quite subtle, it almost looks like natural shadows falling in the crevices, but it isn't. Basically, what they've done is they've taken this base orange and they've sprayed some lighter shading on the surface, so it 
kind of looks like he's powering up or glowing. I would have liked more shading, maybe in the muscle groups and in the crevices, but the lighter shading is definitely better than nothing. As compared to full power Goku, this guy I'm pretty sure was just flat unpainted orange. There might be a little bit of paint going on here, but not entirely sure. As you can see, the colors are completely different. The new one is a lot lighter as compared to the deeper, richer orange on Super Saiyan Full Power. And this chess piece is all new. It's been torn away and it looks good. It looks like torn fabric. Now, unfortunately, there is a subtle skin tone mismatch between the upper torso and the neck, but we've seen that before. For some reason, Bandai can never quite get painted plastic, at least painted skin tone, to perfectly match molded skin tone. Maybe one day they'll just paint everything or just mold everything in skin tone, but the mismatch is absolutely present. Now, these floating shoulder pad pieces are slightly better than previous Gokus in that they sit nice and tight to the body, but if you do get too crazy with the posing, there will be a little bit of gapping. The arms, pretty much identical to full power Goku, nothing to write home about there. Everything else, like I said, is largely identical. I don't want to sound like I'm bashing this guy or I'm complaining too much. I'm still really happy we have a Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Really, I am, but... I would have loved to have seen a 3.0 redesign. I mean, these hips on Gohan, I think, look way better. As compared to these really annoying, brittle, plastic, floating cap pieces that get in your way constantly when it comes to posing. Now, they're not super bad. I guess they do cover up the gaps where on Gohan, the crevices and seam lines are much more visible, but... At the end of the day, this is just an old design. The wrinkling is asymmetrical, so it's not the exact same from one side to the other. Then the boots down below are this deep, rich blue with the red stripe down the center and around the edges. Then on the underside, some sculpted and fully painted tread. What about some head swaps, I hear you ask? Are they possible? Is the head compatible with this body and vice versa? Well, I'm pretty curious to find out as well. You know what? Now that we've swapped this head sculpt onto the full power body, that long neck issue is almost entirely gone. I mean, it still looks a little long, but so much better than it was originally. Could I see myself displaying him like this in the collection? Yeah, potentially, but I still can't get over the metallic hair. Why didn't they just paint it yellow? Now, maybe they're planning on doing a proper yellow painted version in the future, but as it stands with this guy, they didn't. Now, the full power head sculpt on the Super Saiyan 2 body, it does properly click onto the neck connector, but that long neck issue is totally a thing. Plus, it does look like his faceplate is a slightly darker skin tone as compared to the neck, and once again, there's that mismatch with the pec area and the neck as well. So, this combo I don't think works as well as this one does. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, Bandai, this took way too long to put together, but finally, it's done. Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 2, and Super Saiyan 3 all standing side by side. And it's quite a sight. I, for one, am pretty happy. Now, it's not perfect. There is a very big difference in the finish between all three different Super Saiyan transformations. Super Saiyan 1 full power has a matte finish with a little bit of shading. Super Saiyan 2 is this soft metallic gold, not super saturated. Then Super Saiyan 3 is super saturated, it has the shading, and it's metallic as well. So none of them really match. Now, that could technically be a good thing if you want your Super Saiyan transformations to be unique and distinct, but if you want them to blend in, then maybe it doesn't work as well. Super Saiyan 1 full power is the same height as Super Saiyan 2, whereas Super Saiyan 3 looks a little bit shorter, but... The body's the same, the neck length is the same, it's just the height of the hair that makes him look a touch shorter. Next up, the pairing that I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all are going to be rocking in your collections, because it just makes sense, Super Saiyan 2 Goku and Margin Vegeta. This just happens to be the official Bandai version, but the demoniacal fit one, it'll work just as well. Now, Vegeta is a lot shorter than Goku, because... That's how it is in the anime and the manga. Goku is a tall dude, and Vegeta is a short one. So to me, the scaling is accurate. 
One thing that does bug me once again though is the hair colour, Bantai. Why? You've got the metallic finish on Goku's hair knowing full well that Margin Vegeta's hair was matte with some shading. I am hoping that a future version of Goku comes out with matte paint and shading so it matches with the rest of the lineup, but so far, yeah, there is a bit of a mismatch here as well. Going over articulation, if you already own a 2.0 mold Goku from the Figure Arts line, then you know exactly how this guy moves. His articulation is the exact same. I'm still going to be a little bit more careful though, because this guy is an event exclusive. The head sculpt is on a ball peg with a hinge and swivel at the bottom. Then for the base of the neck, I'm pretty sure another ball peg. Looking forward to there, looking up to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, going forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow, then a hinge and swivel for the wrist peg. The torso crunches forward and back, swivels and pivots. The legs will go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee, and thanks to the cutout around the back, it goes pretty much the full way. Then for the ankle, a double ball peg for forward and back, swivel and pivot. And lastly, Toe articulation. Wrapping up on the SDCC exclusive Bandai Tamashii Nations SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Now, I've said this a couple of times already, I'll say it just one more. We have been waiting for this transformation forever. Why the heck did it take them so long? We'll never know, but finally we have one. Is he worth picking up for your collection, potentially for an inflated scalper price? Well, the answer isn't super simple. It's kind of a yes and no. Now, the aura effect, sick. Love the new aura, the lightning bolts. It should have been done ages ago, but we have it now, and it's really good. I love the array of face plates, and we've seen this Goku body before, so we know it's good. The paint applications, the subtle shading, the sculpt for the hair, the halo, and the fact that you get a new chest piece. Yeah, there's a lot to like here, but also... There's a lot not to. We don't get any effect pieces. We also have this weird, soft, metallic yellow gold for the hair. So alongside other Goku figures, this one kind of stands out for all the wrong reasons. You do want Super Saiyan 2 to be unique with the lightning from the aura, but having his hair being metallic yellow, to me, that kind of screams that Bandai, they're sitting there, they're waiting. They're going to eventually release this same figure, but with a normal paint job for the hair. I don't know if that's true, but it's kind of just what this guy is telling me. Because as an exclusive, a lot of people couldn't get it. And Bandai, they're not stupid. They know a lot of people want Super Saiyan 2 Goku. So I would suggest if you don't absolutely have to have this guy right now battling Margin Vegeta... Sit down, relax, wait a minute, and they might just give us another Super Saiyan 2 Goku, but just a regular release. Maybe it won't come with the aura, which would be a darn shame, but if you're just after Goku, you may potentially have another chance in the future. Now, if you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.